OK, well, what did you think then about England's display? Focus has launched a new service where, as well as sending us emails and texts, you can now send us your views through a 3G video message. Sven, just take a look at this. <laughs> Realistically, they need to look at Sven going out in his position and think if he's the right man to lead England to the World Cup. I thought it was disgraceful. I thought if they can't beat Northern Ireland, what the hell is going to happen in the World Cup? He should show more of a passion because that's what fans want to see, and especially uh, when they're wearing England shirts. Uh, you want them to see, you want to see the manager really aggressive, and you don't see that with Sven. It, it was like watching paint dry. I'd stick with Sven for the time being. He's not got a bad record overall, it seems to be in a bit of a sticky patch at the minute, but in general, he's, he's done a decent job. I don't know if there's anybody better for the job, really, so give him a, a chance, I guess. I think if we're going to make some changes, it needs to be done now, get a bit of preparation for the new manager. Maybe we get Stephen McLaren in. I mean, I think he's playing continental football with English football players, and I don't think it's working. Yeah, we'll get rid of him, we'll get him a taxi, yeah. A reminder then, text and email us in the usual way, but to send us a video message, dial 62001 and follow the simple instructions. You can find the full details on the Football Focus website. Sven, a mixed batch of views. What did you make of some of them? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I can understand it, of course. We lost a qualification game. We lost against Northern Ireland. We shouldn't do that. Congratulations once again to Laurie and the Northern Ireland. They did, did very well second half against us. So I understand the critics and uh, you have to accept it. No problem with that. OK, now here's a question that's been banded about for some time now and Mark Lawrenson thinks you won't do it. Would you ever drop David Beckham? <laughs> if he plays like he did uh, now, no. Why should I do that? If he's not playing good football uh, for a while, I will drop him. That's very but, easy. But don't, but don't you think... He's, I mean, he's playing well in that position, but don't you think that's to the detriment of Lampard and Gerrard? who arguably are two of the best midfield players, well, in Europe, let, let alone this well, country. Isn't it taking something away from them? One of the problems, uh, a little bit against Wales, a little bit against Northern Ireland, one of the problems is that it's my job to have them to work together right. better than they did in those two last games. Because rightly, you're saying, we're talking about three of the best football players in the world. So. If it doesn't work out well, uh, of course, all the teams suffer because yeah. they are the spine but of our team. I don't, I don't know about you. I mean, I, I just feel with Beckham, his, his delivery from the right has been as good as anybody in the world for the last ten years. Yes. I, I don't, and I don't understand why you would possibly tinker with the team in such a way when doesn't you get do that it? delivery from him. Mm. Well, once again, I, I tell you that second half against Denmark... Yeah. After that performance, we have to, had to do something because we were outnumbered everywhere, second half there. But, so, but, so you, but you changed it then, though, hadn't you? I changed it, yes. Yeah, but, I mean, so you changed it at heart. It's like, you know, in, in, in all the friendlies, we've seen the first 11 in the first half mm -hmm. and then, you know, the rest of the lads and you were trying them fine. I don't, and anyone's got a great problem with that. And I just, I just, what I just can't understand is why you would want to change it and put people in positions where I don't think you're getting the best from them. I think that's, I think that's what people can't understand. Well, Frank Lampard playing in the position he does for his club all the time. Played like this for... Are you, are you saying to me you don't think Lampard and Gerrard can play together in there? Oh, of course they can do if they are in good form, both of them. If they have the legs, if they are physically OK. We did it many, many times. But they have to be physically right in other ways. Well, so sure. very well, well as, all, like as all players do. But, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's the start of the season, so they should be, shouldn't they? Stephen Gerrard came from an injury. He didn't play. The first game he played was oh, against, was against uh, yeah. Wales. Sven, it's fair to say you've taken a, a feral battering in the press over the last 24, 48 hours. Um, your thoughts on your future? You've already um, mentioned it, that you don't think perhaps you'll be with England if they don't qualify for the World Cup. Well, I think that's absolutely fair to say. If England doesn't qualify, maybe I shouldn't be here. But England will qualify. Mm. I'm sure about that. Over this tough period, especially as over the 40, last 48 hours, have you ever thought about resigning? Absolutely no. No chance. Why should I do that? We are, have one foot in the World Cup. Oh, yeah. we, have, we, have, we have two games 
to go. Mm. We win both, we are qualified for the World Cup. I can't see any reason why I should leave because of that. And are you as confident of qualifying for the World Cup as you were, say, before the friendly against Denmark? Yes. I always said it. We will qualify for the World Cup. OK. Even though, even though nothing on Wednesday really kind of strengthened your case for that? No. Things went wrong mm. on Wednesday, especially second half. Uh, and, of course, the manager's job is to try to get it right. And uh, I will do some travels, talk to the players before we come together next time, and hopefully we will... No, we will get this right. OK. Sven, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. I know you were expecting a few tough questions, um, but thanks very much indeed. I know you got a few. Um, now, Laurie, in the wake of Wednesday's result, um, I know people have gone fairly balmy in, in Northern Ireland, <laughs> so much so that BBC One over there have been running this. Laurie, what did you think of this? BBC One nil in Northern Ireland. That's been going on in the last uh, couple of days. Yeah, well, they apparently um, changed the <laughs> schedule after the game because we got back to the hotel about 11, 12 o'clock and they scrapped the schedule that was on the on um, a film I think was supposed to be seen and they re-showed the game in, in entirety again. Obviously, over here, you, you don't get a full flavour of what's happening back there. I mean, there's all been the talk about Sven and the team and everything and what humiliation it was. Back in Northern Ireland, all they've latched onto is what a great moment in, in Northern Ireland football history it is. And the good thing as well, uh, you know, in a community that's had a, you know, 30 years of trouble, it seems to have brought a lot of people together. Um, there was no trouble. I think there was 2,000 England fans over there, probably 1,000 without tickets. There wasn't an arrest anywhere in the city that night, football-related. Um, and, you know, if football can bring a smile back to the face of the people of Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. then that's, that's, that's tremendous. Yeah, an amazing achievement. Uh, Sven's had to go to uh, watch a game this afternoon in the Premiership at Spurs. Uh, but we've got a substitution here, an able one. Graham Lasso is back here. You've been listening um, to what uh, Sven has had to say, Graham. What did you make? Of well, that? First of all, I'd love to have asked him why he didn't pick me four years ago. I was offering him lunch, dinner, everything to ask that question. <laughs> I but think he's a good judge, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of it? Well, it was interesting enough early on when he said that for 35 minutes we played well, Paul Robinson didn't have a save to make. Mm. Neither did um, Mike Taylor have a save to make. So it was effective as David Beckham was spraying the ball out to Sean Wright Phillips and Sean Wright Phillips maybe could have done more with the chances that he had. Um, we didn't actually create a, a, a really good chance on goal in those 35 minutes and subsequently for, for the other sort of 70 minutes either, 60 minutes. So I think that's the first point. He doesn't, he's, he's very quick to sort of defend the formation, but mm. I think ultimately all the people that have watched that game, everybody that has criticised him, take away the personal criticism, that's absolute nonsense. Mm. You shouldn't, mm. I don't think anybody deserves that. But the criticism that he, he, he was under for his formational change, I don't think all of those people can be wrong. I think there were fundamental flaws in his formation. Um, and then, you know, it, it, he was also, you know, uh, alluding really to the fact that he, he said that the Wayne Rooney incident actually caused a breakdown in the team spirit. So he's, he's, he's using that as a direct reflection of, of why the game went so horribly wrong after that, which is, I think is, you know, that's quite a big statement to, to make against uh, someone like Wayne Rooney, knowing what Wayne, Wayne has done on occasion yeah. before. I, I, know, I know, I mean, he'll never admit to this, but I bet, I bet at the end of the game, when, when they actually sat down, when they came down from the ceiling at Northern Ireland, <laughs> I bet they couldn't believe how few problems they had with England. Yeah. You can be more honest now, Sven's gone. No, I mean, <laughs> you know... Could you? You're yeah. you must have there, thought, there was, there, was really two turn, there was two turning moments in that game for yeah. me. One was the Rooney one, um, where he's our, their iconic player at this yeah, moment yeah, in time. Yeah. And when you saw the frustration he had in his face, I think it reflected the rest of the England team about their performance as a whole, and it showed our boys that we'd affected them. And the second one was, was when they did get the one good chance and it fell to Michael Owen, he put it straight into the hands of yeah. Mike mm -hmm. Taylor. Yeah. And thereafter, I mean, I said to the boys at half-time, you know, we've come in in the same score against England at Old Trafford. We've come in against Germany in a friendly, even Stevens. Mm. I said both times we've gone out and failed to deliver a second half. Now, if you want to be heroes, you've got 45 minutes. That's all we've got to do, produce for 45 minutes. And I thought the second half, we were the better team. You see, see that's, he, just, he just said, he talked about Wayne Rooney. He said, iconic figure. Now, mm. if you've got an iconic figure in the team, You've got to play him where he's most effective. To his strengths. Well, I think so. Just one thing about Wayne Rooney. I've got to ask you this, Laurie. As a top international manager, and you see a, a, a opposing player like Wayne Rooney, who plays on a short fuse, do you look to exploit that? I don't think you look to exploit it. You, you, what, what, what I said before the game is, 
you know, with the greatest respect to our players who play in the Premiership, we had to make it a football league game. Right. We had to bring it down to that level. Mm. And the football league games are about commitment, about pressure on the ball all over the park, about aerial challenges, about putting the ball in the danger area as early as you can, <coughs> as often as you can. Because I said, if we play like Wales did to a certain extent, where it's you show us how good you are, mm. and then we'll show you how good we are, there's only ever going to be one winner. And England won the Wales game um, in second gear. I said, for us to win this football match, they need to be up in third and fourth gear and, and being challenged all the time. And ultimately, that's what our players did to them. And I, th I watched the game again last night, and I was surprised actually watching it a second time, because usually when you watch a game second time, you think it wasn't quite as good as you remember. The actual closing down all over the field. Mm, mm. I mean, James Quinn is tackling Beckham. Yep. Um, you know, Rune, I think the first challenge went in after eight seconds. Yeah. And they were fair challenges. I mean, they weren't... They weren't, they you, weren't set, you set your stool out. I, I mean, we, we were watching the you game, and, the and game, you know, you could see that you were going to close them down, harry them, really put them under pressure. People like Keith Gillespie work so hard. You know, they, everybody put in their... But, but the, the thing is, Laurie, you know, as a player, I know that's how you're going to approach the game. So as England manager and with, England, with the staff, they should know that's how you're going to approach the game as well and then subsequently build their, the way they play around what they think you're going to do. To be fair, though, if you work at that level in the Premiership, and at international level, which is a step above, it's a different rarefied atmosphere to football league. Yeah. And if you've had no experience of it, and you know, um, Steve McLaren has, because Sven certainly has not for many, many years anyway, um, it is an easy thing to say, but it's a difficult thing then when you come up against it to deal with it. And, and you know, we were able to do that. We were able yeah. to get close enough to Beckham, um, the Rooney's of this world, to frustrate them and, and, and not let them produce mm. their game. And, and a lot has to be said, you know, credit to our players. Completely. They stopped well, yeah. England well, playing as England. Wales didn't stop England. Wales allowed. Um, England to play their game and they won in second gear. But we the thing is, the thing as well game. about that, Laurie, is that, that what, whatever you say about a manager, which is fine, is that the players know. Mm. You're going to go to Belfast and you know what you're going to get. And the players are just as culpable as a manager, have to be. So he was one of their better players the other night. Um, you know, his passion for the game, um, his commitment to the game, especially to the England cause, is second to none. Um, where Sven decides to play, and that, that's his choice. Um, I've got to say to the pair of them, I mean, they both came up to me after the game, Sven and, and David, and said, well done, and congratulate me, which, you know, shows the type of people they are outside of football. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in results and things, we, we judge people by results as people, and a pair of them are, are really nice people. Oh, yeah, I read that you spent another 24 hours in Belfast after the game, because normally you come straight back over. I wonder over. why that would be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, so what did you see? Did it surprise you what you saw around you? Yeah, I must admit, going into the two games, you know, I was under a little bit of pressure for the Azerbaijan game, and then if obviously hadn't got that, we wouldn't have got the England game, and, mm. and I had a dinner. Um, it's the 125th anniversary of the association, and I was at a dinner on the Thursday, due for the dinner on the Thursday afternoon, and I thought it could be a long, long day that Thursday if we haven't got the results. As it happens, we got two great results, and I was able to spend the day there. And just, as I say, it's very hard to, get, to, to understand it over here because obviously it's all doom and gloom about the England team. But over there, you know, um, 78 years since they've beaten the team in Belfast, and, and it is a major, major thing. And, and I, I spoke to someone on, on the telephone this morning, they said they're still going over there. They're still mm. talking about it. They're still exuberant about it. They can't wait for the next game. And, and that's what sport's about sometimes. It's, a, it's about giving something back to, to the fans and to the community. And we certainly did that. I mean, a lot, England, a, lot of, sorry, a lot of England fans are moaning about having a foreign manager. <laughs> sort of Northern Ireland. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's it. Don't forget to keep up to date with today's games on score with Ray from 2. Press a red button if you're a digital viewer. Thanks to Sven for coming in earlier. Also to Mark and Graham. And especially for Laurie and Northern Irish fans, we end with a look back at their team's first win over England in 33 years. Goodbye. Neil! Darren Neil, the manager scored! I said it was about belief to win. By half time, we had 11 belief there. Oh, he's on the side, Healy for Northern Ireland, a real chance! England.